Hi, and welcome to Animal Zone. I'm Arthur von Wiesenberger, and this handsome fellow is Mikey, my adopted pit bull. Animal Zone is the A to Z on everything about adoptable pets. Whether you're looking for a bird, a cat, a dog, or even a tortoise, we've got experts who can share their knowledge and insights. So cuddle up with your favorite critter and join us as we explore the Animal Zone. Imagine, if you will, a zone. A zone where animals talk to people. Submitted for your amazement, the pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield. We'll be talking with her about her two new books. And then afterwards, we're gonna take a walk on the wild side with the Wildlife Care Network of Santa Barbara and talk with some baby raccoons. Later on, we're gonna talk with a cat. She was abandoned in an apartment building and she has a few things to say. Luckily, the Community Cat Coalition of Ventura rescued her. And then finally, Laura's gonna talk with two very lucky kitties and a dog. And the dog is now Princess Lily, soon to become a queen. Join us as we journey into the Animal Zone. Bonjour, Alex. Bonjour, Renaud. Happiness, it's great food prepared the French way. Chocolate eclair. What makes you happy? A touch of Paris. Without the trip to France. Handcrafted daily in our bakeries, especially for you. Indulge yourself. Bon appétit. Please visit Renault's in Gelson, Santa Barbara, Long Beach, and La Cañada, Flint Ridge. The Santa Barbara Humane Society is an independent, local, community-based nonprofit with adoptable animals ready to find a forever home today. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we provide low-cost spay and neuter services and vaccinations. It's important for your dogs and cats to get vaccinated to prevent illnesses. And spay and neuter surgeries help prevent unwanted pregnancies and can benefit the health of your pet. At the Santa Barbara Humane Society, we want you to adopt, not shop. Well, here we are on Animal Zone with Mikey and our pet psychic, Laura Stinchfield. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura, for doing this special oh, with us. Of course. This, this is really exciting this week because we're going to visit a lot of different animals. And in a way, the timing is perfect because you've just had a book that's come out. That's true, yes. Tell us about yeah. the You have two books, So I have right? two books that came out. Um, one is called Voices of the Animals, and it's about, uh, there's lots of different stories and articles in there about how to talk to the animals and animals that I've encountered in my life. And then the other book is called Stormy's Words of Wisdom, and Stormy was quite famous in his day when he was alive. He was on my radio show, and he had a segment called Stormy's Words of Wisdom, and he used to get fan mail, and yeah, and cards, and <laughs> people used to stop every time they saw him. So these are all things that he has said in the last five years of his life. So little quotes that he said. So, I mean, it's so fascinating. I think a lot of our viewers may not understand exactly what a pet psychic is. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of just give us an overview of how that started in your life? Mm -hmm. What a pet psychic does is they talk to animals or we talk to animals and we can pick up their thoughts and their feelings and their images in their mind. And then we, um, we can ask them questions or tell them anything that their people want and we can also hear them back. Wow, and does, can anyone talk to an animal? I doubt anyone can talk to an animal. So as long as you're clear and you match your, <laughs> you match um, the images in your head and the feelings in your body to what you're saying to your animal, then they get it. That's the easy part. So anyone who's talking to their animal, their animal is getting it. That's easy. The harder part is getting it back. And really that's just being very, very conscious of the way you think or the way anybody 
anyone thinks um, and to know kind of how your thoughts are and what your feelings are so then it's easier to recognize when another thought or feeling pops in oh and I mean, you can even hear yeah. frogs talking right yeah. now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they want to say a few things. Um, you, you know, I mean, we always hear about when animals pass, they, or when we, anyone passes, they go over the rainbow bridge. Mm -hmm. And what's the transition like for an animal when they do, do pass over? You know, it's different for all, the di for all animals, you know, it's an individual thing. But some of them do talk about like an actual rainbow bridge or rainbow light is another common theme. But like one dog said to me, flew to heaven in the smell of hamburger meat. <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of heaven for all animals, yeah. aren't they? And then some animals talk about being guided to heaven by their people. So like they're, like for instance, if, one, if an animal has passed away in the vet's office, sometimes the animal has the experience of being walked to heaven by their person and handed over either the leash handed over or them being carried and handed over to one of the people's loved ones on the other side like a friend or an ancestor hmm. you know I mean I've often heard that uh, when people pass they go through a tunnel and mm -hmm. there's a light at the other end and then mm -hmm. you see your relatives and fa mm -hmm. fa deceased friends yes. and family members um, and then there's a, a review of your mm. life, at least mm. for humans. Is there the same thing for animals? You know, the animals don't necessarily talk to me about that review, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that doesn't happen mm -hmm. for them. Usually the client has a particular list of questions that they want to talk about, but I haven't necessarily heard of that review. Um, but it doesn't mean it's not happening. And, and what about reincarnation? Does that happen with animals as well? Yeah, it does. It happens all the time. Do they come back as, a, as another same? Yeah, so, like a, would Mikey so, come back as another pit bull? They could come back as another pit bull or they could change breed or they could change sex. And the people will say like, oh, he does something like my late dog did or that the way he sleeps, the way he lies reminds me of my old dog or the way I snuggle with him reminds me of my old dog or my cat. And you, and typically that is a reincarnation because they're 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 coming back, but they don't. They're learning new life lessons in this life, so they're not exactly the same. You mm -hmm. know, like a shy animal could be more confident when they come back, mm -hmm. and so that could be one of the differences. Now, I mean, I've often thought. Um, I know we have a we had a cat that we lost, mm -hmm. Gogan, who was yeah. a wonderful kitty we had for many years. And every once in a while we get the sense that, that the spirit is still there, that yeah. we sort of see out of the corner of our eye a shadow moving or some kind of feeling. And then we sometimes feel like one of the cats that we now have mm -hmm. is a little bit like he, like Gauguin was. Yeah. Does that happen? Often. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, are you, what are you saying? So that, 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 that it's he's, he's a reincarnation, no? Or well, that, that he's wondering. coming to visit? I'm wondering whether, we have, uh, whether he's in one of the other cats part-time uh -huh. or if he's just passing through. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say that and they say, you know, is it possible that my animal on the other side is coming into the animal that I have now and doing certain behaviors for a moment or two? I have not witnessed that myself. Um, I do believe that the animals come around and then they might say to one that's already present, hey, I'm here, can you do something that I used to do in life so my mom and my dad know that I'm around? But I don't know if they come in and occupy the body, although other, other pet psychics will, di will, will say that they do. Mm -hmm. So, I think anything is possible. Well, does Mikey have anything he wants to what say? What do you think, Mikey? So, oh, he wanted to know if he thinks that's my dog Stormy and him would be friends. Well, Stormy's on the other side, but I'm sure you would be great friends because Stormy also is super happy all the time, <laughs> like you. He's, it, oh, he says it's still his job to protect this place. He, and he's very good at that. Well, Mikey, you had a lot to say there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and he's saying, give me some more treats. Cat. Mikey, one more treat? One more treat? One more treat? Yeah, that okay. That's so funny. No. Mikey, where can you get <laughs> Laura's books? Do you know? Oh. Oh. Look, here they are. Here they are. You can get them on you, Amazon, right? On Amazon. And you can order them from your local bookstore. And you have a website as well. I do you? have a website. It's thepetpsychic.com. Well, what do you think? Maybe we should go uh, meet some owners and their pets. I would love as that. As we go on this exploration of the Pet Psychic Special here on Animal Zone. We'll be right back. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today 
And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Every morning you could count on it being there with the rise of the sun. We're proud to say we've been there every day with you. The Santa Barbara News Press plans to continue sharing the news of the day with you all through the year and beyond. It's nice to know there are some things you can still count on. The Santa Barbara News Press, serving Santa Barbara since 1855. Subscribe today. Call 1-800-654-3292. Well, we know that Laura Stinchfield, the pet psychic, can talk to pets, but did you know she can also talk to wildlife? Well, today we're joined with two wonderful folks from the Santa Barbara Wildlife Care Network. Liz and Ariana, thank you so much for coming down here today. Thank you. Yeah, and exciting, yeah. I know that you've got some animals and some video of uh, some of your caregivers, because I think people who don't know the Wildlife Care Network actually rescues repairs and releases uh, animals in need. Right. And mostly that's like skunks and deer and uh, birds, all right. kinds of things. In fact, I got a bird on my hat here <laughs> from you yeah, guys. It's a beautiful one. But tell me, tell me a little bit about what you've got and what you brought. Sure. Well, Santa Barbara Wildlife Care Network rescues uh, at least 4,000 animals every year. And we have uh, animals in care for one day, sometimes up to six months and um, we brought you some video of some of our raccoons and um, all the raccoons on these videos came in to us as infants mm -hmm. and that generally means that they'll be with us in care up to six months until they can be released. We'll wait for them to be able to feed on their own and then we'll usually wait to make sure there's water in the um, habitat so it's recently rained or that we've got a good rain year so that uh, when we do release them they have a successful mm -hmm. chance back into the wild. And do you have to worry about them with people, like then being friendly to people after you release them? Since A little bit. We try to um, haze them as they're starting to develop and get ready or closer to release. We try to get them kind of away from uh, paying attention to us as a source of food um, and shelter and try to get them a little bit more self-sufficient so that when we do release them, if they run into humans, they don't really have a relationship or a connection um, to being drawn towards them. So, and ideally we're um, researching each place that we potentially release something so that it is far enough away from an urban area that could be dangerous and also could have more interaction with humans than we'd like. So. Wow, I mean, do, do sometimes some of the wildlife bond with you guys? I mean, do you find it that can, happens? Um, and then it, what do you do if they possible. do? It's certainly possible. Um, I mean, really we're taking preventative measures to, to keep that from happening. Um, in some cases that might mean covering our faces so that they can't make eye contact and see our facial features. Um, in some cases that may mean just being completely quiet so that they're not making a relation to our voice and a food source. Um, so just kind of being aware of our actions uh, while we're handling and while they are in our care and in rehab. So you guys are kind of like benevolent angels, just floating in, taking <laughs> yes. care of them and flow away. I got it. Really it is, think of it. It's hard to not want to have a bond with an animal in care, but what we're doing is releasing wildlife, so we want them to remain wild. So this is completely opposite from all of our discussions with right. horses or dogs or cats. I mean, pets that are, are you know, we bond with those. Mm -hmm. This is the opposite. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it'll be very interesting to see what they actually think and feel. Right, and to see if they understand what's happening and what if they're going to be released again, right? right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and if they understand what you're doing when you're covering your faces or not talking or... Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. and you know, humans are essentially predators to a lot of animals. Mm -hmm. You know, we have those forward-facing eyes and they're, um, essentially their instinct is to not be near us. And so when they come to us, they're very vulnerable, injured, orphaned, mm -hmm. sick in some way. And so we do give them care, but ultimately we want them to, you know, be released into the wild mm. and not come near us again. Mm. I think one of the, the really neat things that you guys can do for them is to explain that to them. Like when you're, when you have an animal in your care that say, like let's say it's got an injured leg or something that you're here until we can fix your leg and uh, you can walk on it well enough and get gather food well enough and then you we will release you back into the wild. Well, let's take a look maybe yeah. at one of the videos. What 
what, what are you going to show oh, us first? Yeah, they're so neat, these videos. They're so fun. This one is, the, it's young, right? A young raccoon. Still bottle feeding. Still bottle feeding. Where did the raccoon come from? They come from a variety of sources. Um, this one, I think, was orphaned um, with its entire litter. Is this the, I think these are the Guadalupe raccoons. I believe so, yeah. Oh. So what he says is that when he was in your care, he definitely felt like everybody that was handling him, everyone was around him. He said that the energy was very motherly and very like caretaking. And he said that he was used to like others caring for him. So actually being at the facility wasn't really that scary at all because he felt like he was in a safe place. Mm. He said the hardest part, the hardest part for all of them when they were released is not knowing the terrain and not knowing the environment of where they're gonna be. So like that exploring part. So maybe one of the things that you guys could do to make that easier for the animals that are going to be released is to go to that place and um, walk the terrain and walk all around it and kind of think about where you're going to release them and then walk around a certain way and then come back, either do it while you're there, like say to them, like picture them in your mind and say to them, okay, this is gonna be the terrain and let, show it to them from a distance or come back and be like, okay, I wanna show you, this is where you're going to be mm -hmm. so that they have a really good idea of what, 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 like if this is, there's water, or there's like a good place to build a den or what are they, you know? Burrow. So Burrow, yeah. To give yeah. them like a mental map of what exactly. is Exactly, yeah, that's a good way to put it, a mental map, yeah, of where they're gonna be. Laura, this is so amazing. I mean, could I say it's wild? But <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for coming oh, and bringing uh, it's our your, your wonderful uh, you. care, yeah. animals you've been caring for so well. And uh, it sounds like you're doing the right thing. So uh, well, you, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah that's great. So Santa Barbara Wildlife Care Network rocks, and you too. Oh, thank there. you. Thank you so thank much. You. We're gonna take a quick break, Laura, and then we're gonna come back with more the special Laura Stinchfield, okay. the pet psychic. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Oh. Hey, take a look at these loving animals that you can adopt today. And don't worry, if someone beats you to the shelter, there are plenty more wonderful animals ready to find you and their forever home. Care for Paws was started in 2009 with the goal to reduce pet overpopulation and keep animals out of shelters and also to ensure that pets can stay with their owners for life. We, from the get-go, established a free spay and neuter program that would help low-income pet owners fix their pets. So we provide shots, microchips, dewormer, flea treatment. We also have a veterinary intervention program. It's a way for us to help improve the quality of life for the animal as well for the owner. Because when an animal suffers in the family, so does the rest of the family. So we're back here with our pet psychic special, Laura Stinchfield. And joining us, we've got two friends from the Community Cat Coalition in Ventura, Jamie and Debbie, and you've brought a kitten with you, or a cat. Tell me a little bit about what you, who you've got with you. This is Beauty. Beauty was actually trapped in an apartment complex in Oxnard. Um, at that time, she had been out for about a year, and someone had been feeding her thinking she was a stray, which she was. Um, she was mating with another unneutered male, um, and we trapped her, got her spayed. Uh, the manager of the apartment complex said she could not return there. So we were trying to find her a barn cat situation, which is where we place them at a ranch or something to be a mouser. And during that period, we found that she was very loving and sweet. So now we are actually trying to find her a home. So she's not really a feral cat? She right? is not a feral cat. Was someone she pet was, that somehow... She, we don't know where she, she might have been abandoned, um, which happens quite a bit. Um, but she has had some human contact. It could be that she was just a stray and because someone had been feeding her and, you know, she had had that contact with a person, she might not be feral. A feral cat is, um, they have that wild side. They haven't had contact with people. So a lot of times they'll only come out at night. You won't see them. They're very scared. 
so that's a feral cat a stray cat usually they have been abandoned or they've gotten out and you know they have had human contact so they are a little bit friendlier Right. Um, what does the c c uh, community cat coalition do? Are, are you guys involved? The main with thing that screen? yeah, we're, the main thing we do is uh, TNR, which is trap, neuter, return. So we go out. Uh, people will call us and let us know there is a, a feral or stray cat situation, and we will go out and trap uh, the cats. This is actually one of the traps that we use. So we will go out and and trap the cats. We will take them in, get them uh, spayed or neutered. At that point, they will also get vaccinated and ear tipped so that we know that they have already been done and that's just where they cut off the tip of one of the ears. And we will return them to the site of where they came from um, and that's just to reduce uh, overpopulation. So when someone goes into a shelter and adopts a cat that's got a, a, a clipped ear, it wasn't been because it was in a fight, it's because They've been neutered. It's because they have been neutered or spayed. And the main reason we do that is just so we don't re-trap them when they're out in the field. So you want to try and tap into yeah, what the dude so is thinking? A, so what do you think? Did you hear? I'm kind of also curious about how the experience was of you getting trapped. What did you think of that? I think she was fairly easy to trap. Was she? We use sardines a lot as bait, which is, you know, Look at the air tip. Oh, she's, Notice her yeah, the air, air tip. tip here. Yeah. Oh, she said that she knew that, that you guys were coming for her. The guy that was feeding me said, you're gonna get trapped, the person. She said she decided she wanted a home. She said she saw a lot of kitties going into homes and she decided that she wanted that. And you're getting it, you're gonna get it. She said that she would really like someone who would like to play with toys with her. She says she wants to play string play chase. <laughs> you play that with her? <laughs> you have? Yes, she has, a, um, oh. she has, she has cool. toys. Oh, you're gonna find a home with toys then. Maybe they could send you with a toy or two when you find your new home. And she loves her treats. Yeah. They're in there. She says it's no fun being a stray. Oh, she said that her old person, when they left her, said, don't worry, you'll be fine. And she says that is not true. She said she was fine, but she wasn't really fine. She said she had to really look hard for a nice person that would feed her. She said, you know what I think about these people? What, what do you think about these people? She says what they're doing is very important because if we didn't have that, meaning all this stray and feral cats, we would think we were alone in the world. Well, I think we gotta say, yeah. say bye to Beauty for now. And bye, hopefully Beauty. Beauty will find a beautiful new home. You are, Beauty, I know. You're gonna find a great home. You're a cool kitty. And Beauty is just one of thousands, thousands just in Ventura County alone that enter the shelter a year. Wow. And the population is going up. And we, we're trying really hard and we're working really hard to get some of the, there, there's a lot of big colonies out there that just keep reproducing and it's a lot of work. And we're trying really hard to, to level it off, but we're, it's a struggle. Well, thank you for all the hard work you're doing. Yeah. Thanks thank for you coming on Animal Zone today. And we're gonna take a quick break and we come back, we've got more the Pet Psychic Special here on Animal Zone. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. My grandfather taught me about the beauty of the rugs. Each one tells a story. Story about the person who wove it, the person who bought it, the person who inherits it, the person who treasures it. It's amazing how simply looking at an object can bring you back to a different place and time or remind you of someone you love. At Santa Barbara Design Center, we want to help you find a rug that will travel through time with your family for generations to come. Visit us at 410 Oliver Street and find your treasure today. The Santa Barbara County Animal Care Foundation is dedicated to saving animals' lives, but we need your help to continue this critical work. SBCACF provides year-round medical and surgical care so that abandoned, homeless, or abused animals receive the best second chance at finding a loving home. No animal is turned away from surgical care. To learn more and assist us in keeping that pledge, visit sbcanimalcare.org and make a donation today. If they can be saved, we want to save them! 
And we're back here on Animal Zone with Laura Stinchfield, the pet psychic, and we're in the beautiful home of Marilyn and her pets. And I've fallen in love with Lily, which is this sweet, sweet adorable. dog. You said Lily's only what? How old is Lily? Uh, almost 11 months. Just a pup, but she's so so sweet and so mellow. But And then you got these new cats. Tell us about the kitties. Well, this is the baby. His name is Misha. And he came, his father came from Russia and to Seattle, and Misha came to us from Seattle. And this is the Countess, <laughs> who was a rescue from ASAP. Wow, and everybody seems to be getting on okay? So far, so good. That's pretty great. Yeah, it's a mellow, mellow household. Well, Laura, yeah. I mean, you've got a lot, of, a lot of interesting individuals here to pick up on. What, I what know. do you think? Well, what do you think? Do you want to say? What do you want to say? How do you like your new home? Oh. She said she's never been talked to so much in her life. <laughs> she says that you guys always know where she is. They always come looking for you. They always come looking for me. That makes me feel different than my old home. She said at her old home, she wasn't getting groomed. It's true. She says at this home, they make sure that she's always pretty. And they're always touching her eyes. Oops. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Oh, she says she wants to tell you thank you. What does she think about this guy? Yeah, what do you think about your little brother? What do you think about him? She says it's really interesting because sometimes she really likes him and it's really cute and he goes after her tail, but then other times she thinks he's kind of annoying. Fair enough. She said, but he is a smart cat and he listens when I tell him no. She's so sweet. Oh, she sure is beautiful. She's ready to. She can go Do you wherever she goes. Hi. Hi. Okay. You want, try, you want to try him? Sure. He says that he um, he wants to jump hot lot higher. How come he can't jump higher? Can we teach him how to jump higher? I said he'll learn, like jump and climb. He wants to know where the magic is. There's a magic girl. Where is she? Do you have a daughter? Well, we had grandkids and daughters here couple weekends ago. Oh. Do you have a, there were three little granddaughters. Oh, was one of them a magic girl? Oh, I don't know. They which were all pretty is, magic. Wow. <laughs> is Which one's a magic girl? Is Are they all magic? She's the one that talked to me and would show me tunnels. Do you know who that is? I don't know. How old are they? Uh, 13, 10, and s almost 7. I'm God, guessing I wonder if it's it might a be the little one. Yeah, I think, it might I think be so the too. One. I wonder if she, they were like underneath a bed or something. Or... I don't know, but it, it might have been her, Callie. Yeah, I think that's who it is. I'm glad you like the little girl. That's kind of fun. Well, Laura, this is so great, and uh, it's been such a special episode with uh, the all pet psychic we've talked with. Cats, dogs, and uh, you've even talked with me, which yeah. I think is amazing. <laughs> Uh, thanks so much for joining us. And Marilyn, thank you for having us in your home yeah, today. Thank really appreciate you. it. It's our pleasure. All right. And we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back with a little more animals on. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Carrie Burns, and I'm the executive director for the Santa Barbara Humane Society. And what we want you to know is that humane societies are local to each community. No one is associated with the National Humane Society. So when you donate or you adopt, know that everything that you touch is right there in your own backyard. We want you to donate, volunteer, and adopt. For more information, visit sphumanesociety.org. Weren't there some amazing animals and guests? You know, you who adopt animals from shelters, you are the true heroes. If you want to see more about Animal Zone and other things, Check out our website, animalzone.org, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Never was a friend so true, never was a friend like you. Canine, you're my best friend. Canine of mine, friend for all time. So glad you're my best friend. and thin We'll see things through Canine of mine So true Did I find you or did you find me? Either way it's still serendipity 
When I saw you, it was plain to see You weren't just another lassie Wanna be your canine of mine Friend for all time I'm so glad you're my best friend